Hello my friends, welcome to Fishery. I'm Alexander Williamson and today we're going to be talking about layered substrate aquariums. Specifically what I like to call lasagna aquariums. Now these are aquariums like the one behind me here and the one over here that have a semi-deep substrate and use a lot of the principles of deep substrate aquariums and wallstead aquariums but have also fused some of the cutting edge technology and information we have in ecology, biology, and freshwater sciences to create a very low maintenance but beautiful and stable aquarium that can support a whole lot of fish and a whole lot of plants without doing a whole lot of water changes. So, if you're interested in this, in this first video we're going to be constructing one of these tanks. I'm going to show you what you need and how you build it. And in the second video we're going to go over all the science. So if you want to learn exactly what's going on in each layer, we'll get into that in more detail. Where it was, We're just going to barely touch on it in this video. So, let's jump in. And in order to save time, I made some graphics and things so you don't have to actually watch me build the whole tank because I've built several tanks this way on this channel already. So we'll have the images already uh, section by section. All right, my friends, before we go any further, I like to show you what these aquariums look like. Just in everyday use, everyday looks, this one needs a trim badly, as always. I have to trim this one once a week, and I haven't been adding CO2 or fertilizers for over two years now. And I want you to check out the substrate on it. It is all sorts of banded. You can actually see where it goes from oxygen rich above the rust line to below that. It's actually anoxic or anaerobic uh, filtration happening. And you can see that the roots actually turn colors in that line. They go from a green color up here, green and brown, to a white color down in here where they're feeding differently. So we'll talk about all of that and what we're doing when we build these tanks with different zones or when we're using different materials. But I just wanted you to see what you can make these tanks look like. Now this one's a big old jungle. You can create more of aquascape tanks if you want. I definitely tend to uh, allow mine to grow into jungles. And these ones are actually pretty old. Again, if you're looking here at the substrate, you can see there's layers of it. And there's actually cyanobacteria that's growing on this side because it's the side that has the window in the room. So if we come around to this side, there's much less of it. And again, you see that orange rust line up here right below the aqua soil. And then down below it, there's still roots and things. But other than right on the corner, you don't get that same uh that same effect. So we're going to talk about how building underneath your aquascape can actually do just as much for your filtration and for processing nitrites, nitrates, ammonia, and keeping a really lush tank that can hold a whole lot of fish for its gallon size. All of that we're going to talk about in just a moment, but I wanted to share with you these tanks. These are two of the oldest I have. Let's look at two more that are rather old. This one's going on four years here. And this one down here is actually seven or eight years old now. It moved with the house. And you can see the layers of banding going on here. And you can actually tell a whole story going on here if you know what you're looking for. And you can tell where big, deep-rooted plants once were and the remodels that I've done. You can also see water spots when I turn that bright light on, so pardon that. But I just wanted to share with you what these tanks look like in reality four years five years six years eight years into running them also if you were wondering if you can run a carpet and have a nice carpeted tank without co2 the answer is 100 percent this layered substrate method is completely compatible with that and uh, in this tank here, I set this up about three years ago. And I've used some tricks that we're going to look at also. And I've left this exposed on the side so you can see. But here's how you can create big fake mountains. And this is actually all filler in here with just aqua soil in the very top of this, what it is actually an empty water bottle. But that way I didn't have to use the expensive aqua soil to build up the back of the aquascape. Otherwise, you end up spending a whole lot of money. And while this is not trimmed or kept up right now, it's just to show you that even with a very low intensity light here, uh, this is a current light that's on it, you can actually grow carpeting plants in a low to medium light situation because the nutrients are so rich in this ecosystem with this deep substrate setup. All right, so let's look at some of these world-class aquascapes. Look at the substrate. 
it's hardly even there. It's just a little bit of sand in a lot of these. So we need to go over a little bit of science before we jump into why we're doing what we're doing, even in this short version. Look at this aquascape. They have pockets where there's some substrate and stuff. And here where they're carpeting, yeah, they have some aqua soil right where there is a carpet. And maybe they've got pot bottles or pockets or little hidden stashes of aqua soil. But the only reason we can do that is because of products like Amazonia by ADA, which have ammonia in them, which is a vital nutrient for plants. Now, there's also products like Stratum by Fluval on the market, which doesn't have that, but it has minerals. Now, over time, the aqua soil actually behaves just like a deep substrate aquarium, where the center stores ammonia and the outside actually has bacteria that breaks down ammonia in the water column. However, this takes time and you need to cycle aquariums that use active aqua soils with ammonia. So if you have one of these active aqua soils, you can plant right away, but you're going to need to wait before you put your inverts in. Now, let's talk a little bit about the deep substrate anoxic filtration, because if you have an aquarium with this layered substrate or a deep sand bed or a wall stead method type tank what you are basically creating is the same thing that they have created in those pellets i have a whole video on why those are my favorite substrate if i had to pick one and why you can just use that alone but if you look at a deep soil aquascape you can see that below a certain layer the oxygen doesn't reach and bacteria functions completely backwards it begins to store the nitrites and turn them into ammonia which the plant roots then eat rather than them eating nitrates and converting ammonia into nitrites then into nitrates but that's all we're going to talk about briefly in this video let's jump into building our substrate here so here we've got an empty tank and we can talk about all the things we're going to add and we're going to go into some of the biological things too. But first we're going to start with a thin layer of sand. I like to use HTH pool filter sand. It's just nice and easy to come by about 15 bucks a, uh, a bag and I think it does a nice job it blunts any impact of the rocks that are going to come in this second layer now in the second layer you can add any sort of rocks you want but they're really just filling space in the long run you're going to actually be wanting to use something other than rocks to take up uh, the space that's going to be used by plant roots. So this is really for building tall areas. This is also where you can put pipes and little hidden caves and things into your substrate. This is like where you can put those in, kind of DIY those like I showed you in the video earlier. And you can use filter media bags and fill those with things like bio beads or you can even just use things like volcanic rock now this stuff's great because it has magnesium manganese iron and calcium in it which is stuff that plants also need so over time bacteria will break that down and this is a very porous rock and this is really our first important and critical layer out of these that we see now the sand was this there to stop the impact from cracking the glass or anything below but this is actually going to filter your aquarium this is biologically active and while water has oxygen it will grow beneficial bacteria as soon as the silt builds up over time it will no longer do that and that's where the aqua soil layer will be anyways and that is where all your nutrients is going to be now i like to use amazonia ada and i like to add a little bit of charcoal uh for the the potassium and the nutrients that happen to be in wood ash or pot ash i also like using biochar as well there's an actual brand you can get uh you can make your own in biochar uh you can look into that and you can also make your own refined pot ash but i find that i run out of potassium in these tanks before anything else usually uh, with nitrates following so in that layer you actually have the aqua swell which is spheres over time those spheres break down and those rocks are so porous and have so much space in between them that as it breaks down it turns into a 
much denser layer. And over time, you're creating an anoxic layer that's charged with nutrients that fell from your aquarium. Now, obviously, this isn't to scale, but if you're using an active substrate, then you can also cap this layer, and that helps keep everything that's down below and actually storing up or sequestering the ammonia nitrites nitrates and nutrients and stops them from going up in your water column plus it stops the silt and things over time from going up in your water column but the sand is not necessary if you let your tank cycle for several weeks first and burn off those nutrients right away so after we have these layers with the sand on the bottom being optional and top being optional we have additives that I like to add, like botanicals, leaves. They've got tannins, antifungals, antibacterials, probiotics, which sounds like an oxymoron, but it's the amazing uh, co-evolution of these with the organisms we keep. The potash that we talked about. If you have soft water, you may want to add some crushed coral. And also aquachar, that acts as a filtration for uh, very small level particles in the water and things, but it also uh, adds carbon in the long run as it's broken down. Now also, the last thing you'll want to add is your live culture uh, critters once you've got your water in there and all the substrate built. And you're going to want snails, shrimp, and also possibly even things like Daphnia, seed shrimp, planaria, whatever it may be that breaks down all the nutrients. You're going to have to look into how you want to do it. But just like these add-ons here where I'm showing you, you can make a cave or you can actually create more flow so that those lava rock piles are actually filter media bags uh, within your substrate, you can create giant filter media bags within your aquarium and if you have good flow in your aquarium it's actually going to be aerobic or oxygen rich uh, growth that's going on there and bacterial processing now how much do you need of each of these layers well i suggest one to two inches of the sand cap and uh, if you're trying to do a real deep substrate, probably two. But you don't need the sand cap at all, remember, uh, if you're not using an active substrate. Also then, uh, for, the, for the soil or aquasoil, two to three inches for the plants. Underneath that, one to four inches of lava rock. I think that is ideal because that's going to give you uh, voids for the nutrients and mulm over time to fall into, but it's also going to uh, give you surface area early on that will be aerobic bacteria that's actually helping break down the ammonia into nitrates and into nitrites whereas later on when it's very densely filled it's going to do the exact opposite it's going to take nitrites and nitrates and it's going to turn them back into ammonia readily available for the plant roots we made it to the end, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you will join me next time. You know, it's so important with YouTube these days and how many channels we've all amassed since YouTube came out to put those notifications on if you want to see the update video on this, on the science of this. Make sure your bell is clicked and set to all notifications. Because even when it is, they're not going to give you all notifications. And uh, if you want to see more, that's an important step. It does a lot for the channel as well. And so does, of course, liking the video, sharing the video, and leaving a comment on your variations on what we just talked about. It means a lot to me. And thank you for sharing your time with me and for watching. I'll see you guys next time on Fishery.